Good morning, everyone. I'm Julia Borston here for our Tech Check Plus live stream. Today, we are talking to Upwork CEO Hayden Brown. Hayden, good morning, and thank you for being with us today. Thanks for having me. So Upwork reported earnings earlier this week. Your stock is up pretty meaningfully since those earnings. They were better than expected, but still down for the year. It's been a fascinating time for the, the business of getting people work and connecting people with jobs, an incredibly tight labor market. Before we get into some of these broader trends, just tell us what you saw in your first quarter results. Yeah, we had an incredibly strong Q1, delivered 27% year-over-year growth in our gross services volume, which is the amount that clients pay through our site. And that was the first time we've ever surpassed $1 billion in a quarter on that metric. We also delivered 24% year-over-year growth in revenue. And it was amazing that all of this came together so well because the backdrop obviously in the world continues to change. You know, the um, economic situation, the war in Ukraine, there was a lot going on and we have 10% of our business in Russia, Belarus, and Ukraine. And yet we're executing really well through this and saw very minimal impacts to us in Q1. So altogether a really great quarter. So before we get into everything else, I want to talk about guidance. I want to talk about the trends you're seeing. I want to just focus in on what you just said about the fact that you do have this exposure, not just in, in Ukraine, but in Russian Belarus as well. What does this mean? What does the war mean for your business there? What is the status um, of, your, of your business in that part of the world? Is it all come to a screeching halt? If not, and, and what kind of um, if impact do you see this having on the surrounding countries? Yeah, this has been, I mean, an unbelievable tragedy as it's unfolded. And for us, we have a long history in Ukraine, Russia, and Belarus. Back to the founding days of our company, we've had talent there that works directly for us. We've also had customers, both talent and clients in that region. So watching this unfold has been very challenging, but we were preparing even before the conflict broke out that there might be some impacts that you know this could happen and notified customers in January that they should be preparing. And then subsequently, what we've really seen has been an amazing story of resilience. The Ukrainian talent on our platform after an initial dip right after the war began has actually come back in full force. They're working at levels um, that are basically close to what they were doing before the, the conflict. And we've actually seen a huge surge in Ukrainian registrations on our website with more people realizing this is a really viable way for them to work flexibly. They can take the work with them on a laptop wherever they are. And that is a huge value proposition for that community at this moment in time. Um, on the Russian, yeah. yeah, go ahead. No, please go ahead. On the Russia and Belarus side of things, you know, we have uh, less than half of that 10% of our business exposure is in those two countries. And we moved swiftly and decisively to actually determine that we needed to shut down or suspend our operations in those two markets until this conflict resolves. And so we're in the process of doing that. Uh, the existing talent and client contracts will wind down on May 1st. So we will see some more business impact for that for sure in Q2 and, and the quarters ahead. Uh, very interesting. I mean, it, it's kind of remarkable that you haven't seen more of an impact there. But I, I think this might be a good opportunity just to take a step back and explain what it is that Upwork does and sort of the role you play in this freelance economy um, and, and sort of this idea of being a platform to connect employers and employees. What types of companies and workers are you most focused on? Give us a, a bigger picture sense of your business. Sure. So we operate a work marketplace, which matches talent on the one hand with business opportunities, working for clients, ranging from small businesses all the way through uh, the Fortune 100, 30 percent of whom are our clients today. And on the talent side specifically, these are skilled professionals who do everything from web mobile software development to designing creative work, translation work. Pretty much anything that you can do in front of a computer, you can do on Upwork. And uh, we have 10,000 skills today, 90 plus categories of work. So businesses are really finding the talent they, they need all over the world. We operate in 180 plus countries uh, through this platform, finding that talent, working with that talent. They pay through our platform. We kind of offer the end to end solution for them to get that work done. So if you if you look at the growth of the company in recent years, the stock is down very dramatically over the past 52 weeks, over the past year. What are the factors that have um, been, been concerning for investors and potentially problematic for your growth, especially as we think about transitioning out, out of this pandemic phase? Sure. You know, I think it's been a really volatile environment and we've seen a lot uh, with tech stocks in general. So we're definitely not alone in having seen some of that volatility. But what we're talking about and seeing with investors is our business 
it's really in its early innings. We are going after a $1.3 trillion market opportunity. We've seen accelerated growth through the pandemic and now out the other side as well. And as we've been doing that, our team has been innovating new products, new offerings, uh, really expanding uh, what we're giving customers at the same time. So as we look to the future and see what's going on with talent, uh, talent strategies that businesses are trying to employ, the fact that so many workers are going through this great resignation, really reevaluating their priorities and they want flexibility, autonomy, control over when, where, and for whom they're working. Uh, this is just the beginning of a very exciting trajectory for us, serving customers with remote workers, serving talent with the business opportunities that they need. And I think there's gonna be a lot more changes to the workspace overall over the next decade. So that's the question. Some of these changes that were prompted by the pandemic, how many of them are going to be permanent changes? You know, there's been a lot of talk that maybe some of the people who were part of the great resignation are now looking for full time, full time jobs again. What are the trends you're seeing and what is your outlook both for the second quarter and for the rest of the year? Yeah, so our outlook for the second quarter and rest of the year is really strong. We reinstated our guidance this quarter and are expecting 20% uh, growth in Q2 and 19% at the midpoint of our range for the rest of the year. Definitely impacted somewhat by some of the scenarios that we see could happen with Russia and, and Belarus and that whole uh, wind down, but excited nonetheless because the rest of the business is performing so well and so strongly. Uh, to your question about what's next for remote work and what we're seeing kind of with these trends coming out of the pandemic, uh, we're really seeing that workers are clinging on to this idea that they absolutely are not going to go back to the work the way it was. And I think businesses are starting to figure that out. You know, you see a lot of them uh, pulling back the in-office mandates that they initially were kind of testing out over the last few months. And they're really realizing that they need to innovate their work practices because the old ways of working are out the door. And frankly, the old ways of getting talent for them are also out the door. They are struggling to find talent. And the reason is they're really looking in the wrong places and they're making uh, use of these old uh, kind of expired models of just full-time workers only and hiring only in my backyard. And they're realizing that doesn't work anymore. They saw through the pandemic that they can hire remotely, that they can work remotely, and now they can leverage that for different aspects of their team and their operations, even if they themselves may have most of their employees back in the office. So companies are really pushing on that and trying to figure out how do they take advantage of platforms like Upwork for flexibility, agility, cost management, access to skilled talent that they really need. And those value propositions are not only enduring from what they were before the pandemic, but frankly are stronger today in this environment. Yeah, I mean, I think it's really worth noting that Upwork isn't really focused on remote work, it's focused on sort of the freelance or independent contract work, right? And those things well, now- actually, Julia, we actually serve both. So we yeah. have freelance workers and we have people on our platform who are payroll full-time, et cetera. So we're on both sides of that equation. But so then, but so explain to me, obviously, once you talk about freelancers, then the conversation goes directly to remote work, right? These days, you can hire a freelancer anywhere around the world. But in what situations does it make sense for these companies, whether it's a Fortune 100 company or a smaller company, to use your services for a, a, a full-time staff worker? Uh, the number one reason is they start out, they find talent on our platform, and these are forming long-term relationships that they want to in, have endure over time. And so honestly, workers are less thinking about the classification. You know, they may start as a freelancer and then they have a great relationship. At some point, the client and the freelancer may need to convert that to a full-time employee status from a classification standpoint. But also a lot of companies we're working with, especially in the enterprise space, they have large uh, populations of workers who work for them on a payroll basis in all kinds of places around the world. And by bringing them onto our platform, they're streamlining all of the operations around managing that talent. They're integrating that talent workforce with other workforces that are operating on our platform like the freelance populations. And they can start to do a lot more to manage dynamically their talent strategy when they have all of that talent together in a single place uh, on a single platform that gives them the visibility, the access. And then as they need new talent, they can obviously source that on our, our platform as well. And do you have any indication of sort of growth in terms of the number of enterprise customers you have um, post pandemic being different, or is it more really about retaining the customers you have and expanding what they're doing with Upwork? Yeah, our enterprise story has been a huge success. We're expecting 55% growth in that segment in the next quarter. And honestly, or we had that in the last quarter. And honestly, it's, it's coming from a lot of the uh, trends that were enduring again before the pandemic, but now businesses are leaning into in a much bigger way. They are seeing that these are benefits that they need to operate with programmatically at scale inside their companies and that these are long-term strategies. So I think it's less that the type of customer has changed or the um, use cases have changed. It's more that many more businesses absolutely woke up during the pandemic to the reality that they could use remote workers. And to your point earlier, 
once they realize they could use remote workers, that can show up in all facets of their talent plan, whether it's freelance workers, full-time workers, and that opens up a ton of runway for them to use a platform like ours, very programmatic at scale for large programs of managing talent. In the last few minutes of our conversation, I really want to focus in on what you're seeing in terms of the labor market. There's been a lot of speculation that rising uh, rising inflation and a lot of uncertainty about what's going to happen with the economy, you know, war in Ukraine, et cetera, is going to get more people to get back to work. What are the trends you're seeing? How tight is the labor market right now? And what's your outlook? You know, the labor market is tight, although on our platform, we actually have a surplus of talent relative to businesses. So one of our main goals is continue to raise awareness that a platform like ours exists so businesses can take full advantage of that. I think as we head into, you know, whatever comes in the economy and with the labor market going forward, what we've seen historically on Upwork is we do really well in these situations when there are changes, when companies may be looking at, hey, I need to tighten up my, my budget or, hey, I don't, I'm not comfortable doing a full-time uh, hire here. I want to go with someone freelance as I kind of figure out what the economy looks like. So those types of conditions play favorably for us, as have you know the last couple of years and quarters with the pandemic. So we're really a business that's resilient through whatever's coming in the economy, whatever's coming in the labor market. We've been right there serving customers and really delivering increasing value to them as they see it. But do you think that the labor market is going to become less tight? Do you think workers who are part of the re great resignation are going to come signing up for your, your platform or just wanting to get back to work in general? Are, and any early indication of what's happening in the second quarter? I mean, we've already seen throughout the last few quarters that workers leaving uh, like companies are moving into freelance work at higher and higher numbers. This is because of the many attributes that freelance work gives them. And I think as we head into the next phase of the labor market, it remains to be seen, you know, what those dynamics are in terms of um, worker mobility and flexibility. But frankly, what we've heard consistently from freelancers is they actually are increasingly finding that being a freelancer is the place to be in a time of economic uncertainty. So it's not that we see people say, oh, I'm, you know, the economy is looking tight or like things are going on. I'm going to go back to full time jobs. They actually feel that puts them at risk of, you know, a layoff or exposure to this one employer who really is holding their future in their hands. So we've seen this huge shift, especially among younger demographics saying, hey, we want to actually freelance because this is where the certainty and the risk mitigation for us lies is having that bench of clients that we're working with so that if one of them goes away or something happens, uh, I'm actually more safe than I would be in a full time role. So I don't think that even if the labor economy tightens, we necessarily will see a, a, a trend away from independent work. So interesting. So ultimately, creating a portfolio approach as a freelancer is seen as a far more safe way to navigate uncertain economic times. Um, such an interesting uh, window into the state of the labor market and also the business of Upwork. Hayden, thank you so much for talking to us on Tech Tech Plus today. Thanks, Julia.